Hi, uh, I'm Doreen, and our work is about network penetration testing used in continuous planning. So what is uh, penetration testing? Penetration testing is a technique where uh, we want to identify security uh, weaknesses within the network. We do, we do so by attacking our network. The attack, the attack is to identify vulnerabilities, or sorry, to identify uh, information about the machines, the configuration of the machine, and then attack uh, the vulnerabilities corresponding to those vulnerabilities we, f we found um, b before. We, when we exploit uh, a machine, we gain control over the machine, and the goal of the attacker is to gain control over a sensitive machine. He is doing so by attacking ma machine after machine, gaining control machine after machine, and then reaches his goal. So this is a small example. We have five uh, machines, and the attacker controls the internet. He wants to uh, control the gold machine, which can be the database organization, for example. And the attack has only uh, one connection to, to the network, M1. So we will start by exploiting M1. And if the attack succeeds, he gains control over M1. Now he have two choices. He can try to exploit vulnerability on M2 or on M3. In case, he will try to exploit M2 and the attack fails, he will try to attack uh, M3. If the attack succeeds, then he gains control over M3, and now he can attack the goal machine uh, through M3. And then he achieves the goal uh, and ends the plan. So motivation to automated pen testing using planning. Uh, we can see here uh, a part of a big organization network. We can see each node is a, is a different machine, and each color is a different operation system in the, in the network. And there are many, many uh, possible attack, uh, attack paths uh, that an attacker can use in real time. So you can see it's really hard to identify those uh, paths manually, and we want to do, the, to do it uh, automating. So two approaches, uh, model pen testing using planning, model it uh, as a classical problem and as a POMDP problem. The, cl the classical problem assumes that uh, the attacker knows everything about the network. He knows the, uh, the network uh, structure, the each machine configuration, and each, uh, uh, each machine vulnerabilities. In addition, uh, he assume he knows. Uh, excuse me. Sorry. The actions are deterministic, which means that an exploit uh, is fail or succeed, and the attacker knows knows if the exploit will succeed beforehand. So back to our example, we have the five machines, and now the attacker knows everything about the network. So he knows that M1 runs Windows 7 and 65 vulnerability, and M2 runs Linux, and there are no vulnerabilities in this case on Linux. So the attack will be just a sequence of an exploit action from the start, from the internet to the goal machine. It will exploit vulnerability 431 on M1. And then you won't try to exploit M2 because there are no vulnerabilities on M2, M on M2 in those settings. You will exploit M3, gains control over M3, and then exploit the goal machine and achieves his goal. So the advantage is that the, the classical planning uh, is a really scalable method, and it's quite simple to obtain the model. However, uh, we can't... Uh, capture the uncertainty of attacker about the network structure, uh, and, it's, uh, and we produce a really low-cost plan. So we can identify vulnerabilities uh, in the classical planning that may never be used by every attacker. So these are the settings for full observability, and now we want to move to partial observability. Now the attacker does not know uh, each machine configuration and which vulnerability exists in each machine. So the POMDP report uh, now captured the incomplete knowledge of the attacker by adding probability distribution to the possible host configuration initially, and we have sensing action that reveals the uh, operation system and the software's uh, uh, values of machines, and we've got stochastic effects. Now an exploit action may fail or succeed in some probability. So we can, uh, we can represent much better the attacker uh, knowledge about the network. However, this method is not scalable at all to a real, uh, size, of, or to a real uh, size of networks. And it's really hard to know how to obtain the probabilities, how much, what is the 
probability to run XP or Windows 7 on a machine, and what is the probability to succeed or fail uh, in uh, exploit actions. So in our paper, we suggested two models, the former model based on the Canadian hacker problem, and uh, the operational model based on the of partially observable contingent planning. We also uh, conducted our experiments over real network data. So the Canadian hacker problem is based on the Canadian uh, traveler problem. We have a map, the attacker is uh, on the S node. Oh, I can do that. The attacker is on the S node, and you want to reach the T node. You can do, it, do that by going through one or two nodes uh, into the T. However, in those settings, uh, the edges may be blocked. The attacker will know if, the, if an edge is blocked only when he reaches the node and sends the edge. So, at start, he will try to uh, exploit uh, one against control over one. Pay attention that he stays uh, still at S, so he just uh, accumulates the, uh, the nodes. Then he will try to traverse to T, and then the, the edge is blocked. So he will try to attack to uh, the second node. This edge is open, and he reaches this goal. So our formal model is based on uh, the Canadian hacker problem. We add quality of, uh, partially observability to the model. We have a graph where the nodes are the machines in the network, and, and the edges are the connection between the machine. The connection uh, represents a real connection in the network uh, structure. And in addition, we have a, a connection, an edge, for every exploit that we can perform over the target machine. For example, we have two hosts here, M1 and M2, and there are two uh, possible exploit actions that we can execute over M2. C is the uh, machine configuration propositions. It's all the propositions that can describe the network configuration, for example, the operation system, the softwares, and whether a vulnerability exists in the machine. And for each node in the network, we have a node labeling, a node configuration. For example, for a uh, machine tool, we have that you, uh, it runs Windows 7, PHP, and there is 431 vulnerability in the machine. Each label is also have, a, excuse me, each edge also have labeling, uh, which are the precondition for the exploit action. Uh, for example, to execute 431, you need to, ru to run Windows 7, PHP, and that the vulnerability exists in the target machine. All those propositions related to the target machine, and they are uh, determined if the edge is blocked or open in real time. O is the observable configuration that we can uh, observe during our plan. It's only uh, the direct action that we can perform in order to reveal the, the value of the, those propositions. So we can reveal the value of the operation system and the softwares. However, we cannot sense the, if there is a vulnerability in a machine directly. Uh, e over L is the edge labeling function, which is known to the attacker beforehand. He knows uh, which preconditions are uh, for each exploit action. However, it does not know the uh, node labeling, so it does not know uh, the node, um, the node con configuration. And there are several possible node configuration which determine the initial belief state uh, at the beginning. So a solution in our case may be an action tree where the nodes are the actions and the edges are the observations that we can see during our plan. And a strong solution is where every leaf achieves the goal, which every leaf achieves the machine, the goal machine, target machine of the attacker. However, in our problem, there are unsolvable uh, configurations, and this, uh, in this definition is not relevant in our case. Let's see an example for unsolvable configuration. We have the same, uh, the same example, but we have two operation systems, Windows 7 and Linux, two software, PHP and, uh, PHP and Outlook, two vulnerabilities corresponding only to uh, Windows 7 with different uh, uh, softwares, and we can, we can uh, see the M1 configuration, real state. M1 runs Windows 7, PHP, and the vulnerability corresponding to Windows and PHP uh, is not exist on M1. So we can see that uh, the attacker cannot try to exploit anything uh, on M1, and the edge is blocked, and there is no other path through the goal machine. Hence, we have an unsolvable configuration. 
So we need to do a, a new definition. So we define a hopeless belief state where every uh, state in the belief is unsolvable. And in our plan, every node or every leaf can be associated uh, to a belief state, and we determine a valid solution to our uh, problem as a give up hopeless plan where every leaf uh, belief state is associated to a goal belief state or to a hopeless belief state. So let's see uh, an example for a plan in our case. So the attacker starts by uh, asking for M1, uh, M1 uh, configuration, asking M1 uh, operation system, and there are two possible answers in our settings, Linux or Windows 7. As I mentioned, Linux does not have any vulnerabilities. So we reached to a hopeless uh, belief state. In case it runs Windows 7, now we can uh, ask for the software it runs, and there are, again, two possibilities, Outlook and PHP. In case we ru it runs PHP, we can try to exploit vulnerability 431 and then uh, continue our plan from there. In case it runs Outlook, we can try to exploit vulnerability 65. And there are two possible uh, outcomes to the exploit action, and the, which, are, um, which results are depending on the exist vulnerability proposition in the machine. If the vulnerability does not exist on M1, then we did not gain control over M1, and again, we reached a hopeless belief state. If the vulnerability exists uh, on M1, so we gain control over the machine, and now we can try to exploit M2 or M3. Let's ask the uh, operation system of, uh, of M2, M3, sorry. In case of Linux, again, we cannot uh, ex issue uh, exploit on M3, but we did not reach a hopeless belief set yet. We can try to exploit M2 and try to reach the goal from there. In case it runs Windows 7, we will ask for uh, the softwares and try to exploit uh, the, the corresponding vulnerability. Okay. So previously work that done in the field uh, conducted the experiments over simulated data. Uh, we wanted to uh, conduct the experiments over, uh, over real data, so we managed to obtain data from two, org two organizations. We obtain the machines, the connection between the machines, the operation system, the softwares, and the vulnerability exist in each machine. Uh, we did so by scanning it with NASU scans each subnet within the network and from the internet to, all, to each subnet, and we aggregate the result into one, into single model. So we managed to solve the, uh, those networks. We can see that the two organizations consist with different amount of hosts, uh, operation system software, and vulnerabilities. Uh, and the state space search is quite huge. Uh, however, we managed to solve it in a reasonable time, and we produced quite large plants uh, that attacks the, attack the networks. We also wanted to compare our method to a POMDP method. Uh, However, POMDP is not uh, scalable to our uh, network size, so we uh, subsample our networks. We created uh, smaller problems, and we compared it with a heuristic uh, contingent planner. We added a heuristic based on the structure of the, uh, of the network, and we added uh, another, another contingent planner with random action selection. So we can see that in terms of time, the POMDP uh, managed to solve uh, the, the, small, the small networks and the, the time growth exponentially in the problem size. Uh, and we, are, we managed to solve it quite good. In terms of expected utility of the plan, uh, the POMDP is the most accurate uh, model, but we can see that the contingent planner using our heuristics uh, is quite close to the POMDP results and much better than the random results. To conclude, uh, we suggested two, formal, uh, two models for modeling pen testing using contingent planning. Uh, our model is uh, richer than the classical settings, and we managed to be more scalable than the POMDP approach. And we also uh, conducted our experiments over uh, real network data. Thank you. So, as a Canadian, I feel responsible to apologize for all the Canadian hackers out there. Um, but 
It, it seems to me that this might, uh, while there's notions of partial observability, it might be representable as a fond problem itself. Uh, have you looked at, is this a simple contingent plan, or simple as a proper definition, or L1 equivalent, or anything like that? Well, well, no, because we, we felt like we need to add the sanctions that, that the actions are deterministic. We, the action, but the, it seems very monotonic, right? So a simple contingent problem where the uncertainty only monotonically decreases, you can get away with a lot uh, yeah, more right. naive you're techniques. Yeah, right. Where, where, where we have closing machines in our algorithm. In the contingent plan, we have closed machine in each configuration that's similar to and this configuration we already solved. We are not developing a uh, Again, uh, but you're right, yeah. Okay. Follow, following up on that, I mean, is the problem submodular? And what? therefore, is the problem submodular, the POMDP? Yeah. So, interesting to think about that. It, perhaps not. And then, looking at the sort of capture the flag, DARPA Grand Challenge sort of scenarios, time seems to be important, right? So yeah, yeah, time yeah. is important. And we also have a different work uh, that we uh, assume budget, tax budget under it, but uh, yeah. OK, excellent. Looking forward to seeing that. Yeah. Just wanted to point out, I mean, there are very specialized planners. It seems in, in your context that um, yes, you don't have all of the information, but then sensing gives you the information for sure, right? Some, I mean, if some I of the information, yeah. Again? Some of the information. There, are, there is information that you can observe during mm -hmm. the plan by the sensing action, but you can, can't observe whether the exploit will succeed or fail. Fair, fair enough. Uh, but something like the operating system, right? I mean, so I can figure yeah. out whether it's Windows yeah, yeah, or Linux it's, and, it's supposed and to there's be, no it, noise it, in there. I just wanted to point out that there are sort of very early on there have been interesting planners developed, sort of POMDP planners, but that utilize that particular property, uh, you know, by sensing might cost something, right, but then gives you sort of certain information, and they actually work quite fast, so that might be an alternative on the POMDP side to what you're doing. But we're trying to model, uh, like, the steps that an attacker will do, so we tr will try to uh, sense an operation system. I, I don't know if I... I, I sure, but I, I think that might still work. So it might be something okay. to look at, you know, whether that's okay. of interest. Another question that I had is about network topology. I mean, it, it, it seems that you assume that you basically know the network topology, right, in order to plan... Yeah, some but attacks. this is an assumption that it, it's easy to remove from the model. Uh, however, an attacker knows something about the network, so he knows maybe some of the configuration of the machine or the topology. You need to assume that he knows something because otherwise it's just a random uh, attack. It would, uh, yeah, yeah it would so some, there some is nothing smart, uh, smart it, just that. Okay, fair enough. Are there any other questions? Okay, then, thank you very much again. Thank you.